Colossus 1.26-27 Maging ang iwaga na inilihim sa lahat ng panahon at lahi, datapwat ngayon ay ipinahayag sa kanyang mga banal. Nasa kanila'y minagaling ng Diyos na ipakilala kung ano ang mga kayamanan ng kaluwalhatian ng hiwagang ito sa gitna ng mga hentel na ito'y si Kristo na nasa inyo na pag-asa ninyo sa kaluwalhatian. Colossians 1.26-27 Even the mystery which hath been hid from age and from generations but now is made manifest to his saints. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. To my fellow Maharlikans on this planet Earth, 777 Morningstar, though her by dedicate this rock of all ages, Kingdom of Maharlika, Royal House of All Nation, regardless of race, color, creed, station, and position to whatever country we belong. For we be in many as one body, has common destiny, and whatever wealth, riches, vanity, distinction being possessed of shall be left at the end of the road. 777 Morningstar Foundation Incorporated Hello mga kapatid, kapamilya, kaposo, amigo, amiga, higala, barkada, kakabsat, kailan, kasangkay, Kamusta? 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 Mula sa 777 Morningstar Foundation Incorporated Kingdom of Maharlika Taos puso kaming nagpapasalamat sa inyong lahat sa patuloy ninyong panunood at suporta sa aming mga pinapalabas sa aming mga minamahal na viewers, subscribers and supporters all over the world Thank you, thank you, thank you Mga kapatid 777 Morningstar Foundation Incorporated Kingdom of Maharlika ay hindi magsasawang maghatid sa inyo ng mga bagong kaalaman at mga bagong matutunan na maaaring ngayon lang sumagi sa inyong mga kaisipan. Ngunit mga kapatid, before we start, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you'll always notify every time I upload a new videos. And once more, don't forget to share, share, share! So, for our main topic and for this new episode, let us discover how Mr. Marcos Ferdinand Etralin Marcos, known to be the richest man in history of mankind. Is this real or just only a story? So, if you love to know the truth, get ready, set up your seatbelt, stay where you are and listen carefully. Hello. Hi. Matatapos po tayo sa webinar. Okay. So, it's time again for us to come together but before we start our lesson today, let me greet you. 
a prosperous maybe to each and everyone. Our main topic today is my president, our president, Ferdinand Edwin Marcos, the richest man in the history of Manca. But may I ask each and everyone to subscribe with your TV. Click and share so that we have a more clearer views of how the Philippines will become the richest nation in the planet Earth. Here, how it all began. This was the Marcos wealth that some politician and churchmen keep on saying was the El Gatan Marcos wealth. Well, they keep on saying that this is El Gatan Marcos wealth. From 1866 to 1898, Prince Julian Macriot Taliano who become the title or holder of OCT Sirwanda score in 1864 had also been frequenting the Vatican. The document was entitled Original Certificate of Title Sirwanda Score Protocol. The number Sirwan refers to the one nation known in pre-Hispanic time of Maharika. The number four refers to the original four regions in this nation, Juan, Luzon. Second, Visayas, three, Mindanao, and number four, Palawan, Tagyanao, Kalayaan, Islands, and North Borneo. In 1963, when the Federation of Malaysia was created, the name was changed to Sabah. This included the Spratly Island, just north of Palawan, the ownership of which is now contested by six other countries. The British recognized the fact that North Borneo, Sabah, was part of Maharika Archipelago. In 1934, under Pope Pius VII, the Vatican negotiated with the members of the Filipino royal family. The Christian Taliano clan in the Mahatika, an agreement to us reached that 640,000 metric tons of the Taliano gold would be lent to the Pope. This was part of the gold accommodated by the Southeast Asian Siberia and Majapahit Empire during its glorious reign of 900 years. In 1939, two members of Taliano family and a Roman Catholic priest, Father Jose Antonio Diaz, brought the gold from Kuta, Kinabalu, Saba to the Vatican. After doing this, Father Diaz, Santa Romana, went back to the Mahatika and recited in Kabanatuan City. After World War II, he facilitated the ship return of the 640,000 metric tons of gold from the Vatican to Mahatika. Manuela Cunha, Rojas, a relative of Aconia Tagian Taliano clan, then a congressman and bishop Enrique Sobrepeña Sr. in the presence of attorney Lorenzo Tagliana, he received the gold in Manila. There is good reason to believe, even from further along this account, 
that the young attorney Ferdinand E. Marcos was involved in the return of the gold, certainly by all of account. We have seen it was Ferdinand E. Marcos and Father Antonio Diaz Santa Romana who shared in the enormous 30% commission that is 192,000 tons of gold worth around 4 trillion today for handling this transaction who can say this wealth was El Gabe? At least agreement was made between the Taliano plan and the Mahatika government. A total of 617,550 of gold was deposited in a newly installed general bank of Mahatika to comply with the requirement for gold reserve. Under the term of the contract, the central bank began the holder of the gold. The lease agreement will expire in the year 2005. The Taliano Foundation has given notice of the termination of the 15 years lease following the additional five years discretionary period of December 31, 2005. But remain unable to obtain an inventory of this asset, even though the Central Bank now, Central Bank of Filipinas, is no longer entitled to hold the gold. Having gained the trust and confidence of Father Diaz, the Tariyaka made him the main negotiator and trustee of their gold. Father Diaz, in return, as the service of attorney Ferdinand E. Marcos, then highly recommended brilliant young lawyer, having attained a notoriety when he successfully defended himself in the Nalundatan case in 1939. The Tarjano Plan paid commission to Father Diaz and attorney Marcos in gold, 30%, from the principal of 640 metric tons in 1949. Two richest men in the world were Father Jose Antonio Diaz and Antonio Ferdinand Edlery Marcos. Between the two of them, they will be the British earn and owe 192,000 metric tons of gold. Ferdinand Edelin Marcos withdrew their share of the gold from the Central Bank and minted in Arctic. See, sometimes later, Father Diaz and Marcos brought their gold to Switzerland in the Swiss Bank Corporation in Zurich. The remaining 400,000 metric tons of Taliano gold is in the third floor basement of the Central Bank meeting plant in the East Avenue, Kilsol City. There are 950,000 metric tons of gold declared missing in the International Court of Justice picked by Yamashita from its European ally, Hitler. Another 250,000 tons of the Japanese food around Southeast Asia are moved now in the Maharika. This country then becomes the holder of 1.6 million metric tons of gold bars. Some of the Yamashita gold buried in the Maharika has been found, but the bulk of it is still buried in the States. And even now, Thousands are secretly digging for it, including Japanese treasure and death. The Wall Street Journal in November 15, 1985, issued, wrote that two thirds of all the gold in the world is in Maharika. One third is divided among the rest of the countries in the world. Very few Filipinos know this. Let's review some numbers of this point because there are certainly some unexplained losses among, along the way. 
the tagyan tagyan of gold is starting at 720,000 tons to 640,000 tons were transported to the Vatican and back leaving 80,000 tons unaccounted from the outset. Out of 640,000 tons, 192,000 were paid in commission, which should have 448,000 tons, but somehow that number has become 400,000 tons unaccounted. Following this story, there are 120,000, 80,000 plus 48,000 tons of gold, which somehow is linked through the crack in addition to 192,000 tons earned in commission where about unknown. Oops. Out of the remaining 400,000 tons, we do not know how much remain. We know there was an effort to do the major disappearing when the old Central Bank more paid into the Banco Central Filipinas. But the recent decision of Supreme Court, Banco Filipino versus BSP, has upheld that BSP is responsible for the liabilities of the old Central Bank. So, how much longer can they keep these hundreds of thousands of tons of gold hidden? under the carpet and out of sight of the Filipino people. While 80% live at the age of starvation. The point is ultimately a complete accounting should show where all of the original 720,000 tons went not to mention the estimate 1.2 million tons of your Masita treasure combined German and Japanese planted identify the rock that is very near 2 million tons of gold worth more than 38 trillion at today's price of 2005. The Pony CIA back its up People's Power Exhibition of 1986 had one primary purpose and that was to take this vast quantity of gold from the Philippines and the Filipino people for the benefit of the international banking cartel to explain mankind. How about the Santa Mar? Diaz, Vatican Commission, shared with Ferdinand Marcos when Padre Jose Antonio Diaz, alias Severino, Santa Armana died in 1974, all the 30% commission in gold became begin dari. They called it Marcos Gold. After providing for his family, in Marcos' letter of instruction, the whole wealth derived this, supposed to be given to the Filipino people. This was the Marcos Wealth that some politician and churchmen keep on saying was El Gatton Wealth, Marcos Wealth. Well, see why this wealth has been labeled El Gatton. A little further along in our study that until today is in Marcos' secret account. On April 9, 1973, Marco said, My earthly goods have been placed in the custody and for disposition of the Marco Foundation dedicated to the welfare of the Filipino people.